If you're looking for a comprehensive review of the GPU market from GPUs that are five years old to the used market to GPUs that are brand new released just this year, then this is the video for you. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my GPU spreadsheet, which compares price and performance across a wide range of GPUs from AMD, Nvidia, and even some from Intel. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First, I'm gonna be looking at raw copy performance. Now, this data was collected from synthetic benchmarks, including Geekbench and Passmark, and I basically averaged it out and then normalized it against the top performer, which is currently the RTX 4090. Now, if you're a bit smarter with your money, the next step down is probably gonna be your best bet if you still want solid high-end performance. In this range, I think the 7900 XTX is kind of a no-brainer. It performs almost as well as a 4080, but is way cheaper. On the next step down, we have the 3080 Ti, 3080, and 6800 XT. The 3080 and 6800 XT trade blows with each other depending on what you're using it for. So I'd advise looking at the specific program benchmarks you're gonna be using the GPU for and making your decision from that data. Moving down the list, we have a ton of options depending on your budget. Going down the stack, the 3070, 2080 Super, 2070 Super, 6600 XT, 5700 XT, 6600, and 5600 XT are all gonna be pretty decent options ranging from the 100 to $300 mark. Switching over to used pricing, most of my recommendations don't really change. Now let's take a look at power efficiency. So first off with copy performance, in terms of raw power efficiency, the 40 series is going to be the winner here. Now this is something that people tend to forget. While the 40 series is overpriced, especially when you just look at their rasterization performance, they are actually quite power efficient compared to their AMD counterparts. Now the story does change somewhat when we compare 4K gaming performance and TDP. The 40 series GPUs do still lead by quite a bit, but the difference isn't so substantial as with raw computational performance. So overall for power efficiency, the 40 series is definitely gonna be the way to go. Keep in mind that the 40 series GPUs are gonna be more expensive than their AMD counterparts. So you're gonna to have to weigh the pros and cons between having a higher entry cost in terms of buying the GPU or higher running costs, which doesn't only include your electricity bill, but also how noisy your fans are gonna be running as well as how hot your room's gonna be. All right, now let's jump into 1080p price versus performance. Performance. Starting off with medium settings rasterization performance, if you want top end performance, you won't have to go any higher than a 6950 XT. At just a third of the cost of the RTX 4090, it's going to have basically the same performance. Moving down the stack, we can easily tell that 1080p rasterization is going to be dominated by AMD. Listing them off, we have the 6800 XT, 6750 XT, 6700 XT, 7600, 6600 XT, 5700 XT, and 5600 XT. I wouldn't recommend going any lower than the 5600 XT since you're going to be losing a lot in performance compared to your cost savings. On top of that, you could always go with a used GPU if you need to bring it down within your budget. Speaking of used pricing, it doesn't really change the recommendations. The Radeon 6000 series is still going to be the best bet at pretty much every price point, though a few NVIDIA GPUs like the 2080 Super will jump in value when you go to used pricing. If you're going to be cranking up your settings at 1080p, the recommendations do change here, but it's still going to be dominated by AMD graphics cards. On the top end, the 7900 XTX is going to be best bang for your buck in terms of getting top end performance. On the next step down, we have the 6950 XT, but it doesn't really have as much value as it did when we looked at medium settings. Starting with the 6800 XT, we can go down the stack on the 6000 series, and you pretty much can't go wrong with any of them. When we switch over to used pricing, a few GPUs do jump up in their value property position like the RX 7900 XT. However, for the most part, it remains the same as with new pricing and is going to be predominantly AMD GPUs. Now let's bump up the resolution to 1440p. On the top end, yet again, we have the 7900 XTX. Just below that, we have the 6950 XT, but as with before, it does seem to be losing its value proposition as we increase the graphic settings and resolutions. In the mid to low range, we do have a few pretty good options from Nvidia, like the 3070 and 2080 Super. However, generally speaking, for rasterization, it's still probably a better bet to go with AMD. But something interesting happens once we switch over to used pricing. Nvidia suddenly becomes a very competitive option. Going down the stack, we have the 3080 and 3070 Ti. This pattern of trading blows kind of mellows off once you get into the budget range, but we still have a few pretty decent options like the 2080 Super. All right, let's move on to the big boys. 
In 4K rasterization performance, the 4090 definitely leads the charts, but it's honestly not worth the price premium, especially compared to something like the 7900 XTX. But once we get down to the about $300 mark, we see that AMD and Nvidia are gonna be trading blows with each other. However, I wouldn't recommend spending this little for a 4K graphics card, mainly because your performance is gonna be pretty atrocious, it's not gonna be stable, and you're really gonna be pushing the limits of your graphics card. Even with used market pricing, Nvidia is still gonna be a better option most of the time. Other than the 7900 XTX, which is just better bang for your buck if you were looking for top end performance, at the other price ranges, the Nvidia 30 series is just gonna be a better bet. So far, all we've covered is rasterization performance, but what about ray tracing? Just go with NVIDIA. AMD has been steadily improving their ray tracing technology, but it's still not even close with NVIDIA, especially when you also combine their upscaling technologies. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you wanna see my recommended builds as of 2023 for pretty much every budget and every use case, definitely check out my PC Part Picker profile. I've also linked that in the description. If you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like. And if you have any questions or you're looking for a specific recommendation, feel free to leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching.